Hi, I'm your host, Marsha Florence for Just Ask. Today's show, ladies and gentlemen, is Overcoming Financial Obstacles. Hurry back and join us. Mental health disorders are serious and treatable conditions. Isolation, loneliness, and changes in behavior could be signs that someone you know is suffering from depression. Learn how to recognize when family or friends are in crisis and what you can do to help. Mental health does matter. Contact the Resource and Crisis Helpline with your concerns at 1-800-231-1127. No, what'd she say? She said whatever. No, she says that all the time. What's that? Hello? I'm on the phone. Mom, I'm on the phone! Hello? I'm on the phone. Who's this? It's me. I'm on the phone. Mom. Oh, you're on the phone. <laughs> all right. Sorry! Sorry. Sorry. Okay, anyway. Who are you talking to? Kelly? Mom. All right. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who would love to put up with you. We'll get you moving. Because when you get moving an hour a day, you'll have more energy to do the things you like to do. So be a player. Get up, play, and move it your way. Check out how to be a player at letsmove.gov. That's www.letsmove.gov. Hey, Hard, what's this? That's my resignation. You're resigning. Why? You've been putting me under a lot of pressure lately. That's why I'm ready to quit. Oh, I forgot. I'll do better. Please don't quit on me. Don't let your heart quit on you. Get your uncontrolled high blood pressure to a healthy range before it's too late. Hi, I'm your host, Marsha Florence for Just Ask. Today's show, ladies and gentlemen, is Overcoming Financial Obstacles. And we have with us herself, Arthur Gail Perry Mason. Good morning, Gail. Hey, good morning, Marsha. I'm so glad to be here today. Thank you, thank mm -hmm. you, thank you. You know, yes. I am so pleased to have you here because, you know, you're a well-known author for many books. But this mm -hmm. time, I want you to tell us a little bit about yourself and what should we be talking about overcoming financial obstacles? You know, first of all, we all have obstacles to overcome. Everybody has a story, and you know that. And my story, because I know this is in the state of Michigan, you know, I used to be a ward of the state of Michigan, and that was an obstacle. I was given it for adoption, uh, right downtown Detroit, and I was given it for adoption. And the obstacle was I had a disability. So they labeled me special needs and hard to place. So they wow. said I would never, ever walk and never, ever talk ever in my entire life. So finally, I got adopted three years later. My name used to be Stephanie. Mm -hmm. And I got adopted three years later. Somebody named me Gail. And this doctor came over and said, you know what? take the braces off her legs, don't take her back to the hospital ever again, and just love her and hold her and talk to her. Uh -huh. And now I never shut up, Marsha. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're here today. Wow. And then I think love is the answer to every single thing. Okay. Love means let obstacles vanish effortlessly. And that's what it means. So that's why I okay. think you can overcome anything with love. And that's when it comes to money too, financial obstacles, mm -hmm. everything. So I mm -hmm. teach people about finances, mm -hmm. but it's really just a tool that it comes as a result of what we do. Wow. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you, you just said a wealth of information and just learning about uh, yourself was just, you know, uh, uh, open uh, eye-opening, blissful piece of information because our viewers are always wondering about people's backgrounds and when they see someone, they always mm -hmm. think, oh, they've never had a problem in the world or they're the mm -hmm. perfect person and no one's perfect. You know, no, no well, one. not, not okay. at all. Yeah. <laughs> okay, not okay. one person. Right, right, yeah, right. So, right. so what, what, what got you into the finance business? Because, you know, you're very knowledgeable about finances. So what got you into that? Oh, Marsha, I'm glad you asked that, but that was an obstacle itself. 
I went away to college because I was adopted by older parents and they never had an opportunity to go to college. So I went away to college, got married, pregnant, and divorced. Nobody's business which came first. Okay. Watching. Okay. But anyway, <laughs> so it was an obstacle. And so I ended up sending out my resume. You know, back in the day, they didn't have internet or whatever. So mm -hmm. I sent my resume everywhere. So once I sent my resume, a brokerage firm called. And I'm thinking, I know what a brokerage firm was. I didn't know anything about financial literacy, financial empowerment, anything. I was just like, look, I'm broke, brokerage firm. <laughs> so I figured that was divine order. So I was like, okay, this is a sign. I'm broke, brokerage firm. So I ended up working at a brokerage firm, loving to talk as a receptionist. People come in the front door with money. And I'm thinking, how'd they get this money? You know, and then finally somebody said, you know, I got divorced. I'm thinking, girl, me too. So she says, well, I said, where'd you get your money from? She said, my ex. I was like, well, who would you marry? Because overdraft protection was my line of credit back in the day, Marsha. So anyway, wow. so I was like, well, wait, so what are you going to do with this money? He said, they're going to invest it and make it work for them. And then this, that's when I said, you know what? Let me become a financial advisor and start teaching people. Well, anyway, they wouldn't allow me to become a financial advisor because here I am, a single African-American female. Mm -hmm. They were, that's exactly what they told me too. And I couldn't become a financial advisor. I ended up casing the situation out, Marsha. Let me tell you, <laughs> case means copy and steal everything. Okay. So I saw somebody's book sitting on the table. I went and Xerox those books. I don't Xerox my book now okay. because I didn't know copyright laws at the time. Okay. But anyway, I Xerox the books, studied them and took the tests and finally, you know, passed the test. And I, and they, I was a licensed secretary. Then I put on a seminar in Detroit. I wanted to teach people financial literacy. Mm -hmm. And I figured if you have money, just 25 bucks, start doing something today. Start changing your financial mindset. So I put on a seminar in the city of Detroit. And then I, my, my branch manager said, Gail, you can try to be a financial advisor. Mm -hmm. But if you make it, you know, okay. If you don't make it, that's fine too. I'm going to give you a chair wheels on. You can roll one way for 90 days and roll right back over. You don't make it. Well, anyway, I roll back over and Never look never back. Roll back. And never roll back. <laughs> never roll and back. Now, so that's one obstacle I had to roll over. And so, but my goal was really just to teach people. Mm -hmm. So, and that's why I ended up writing the book and writing books and doing things like that because I really wanted to teach people. I okay. think it's people over profits. So actually education is key. Education is definitely mm -hmm, key. Mm -hmm. And yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. we all have to, and I didn't know anything. So I'll just be perfectly honest. I knew nothing about finances at all. But now... That's a different story. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Trial I mean, and right. error all the time. But, but, it's trial and error you know, all the time. You know yeah, what? A lot yeah. of times, Gail, you know, what happens is, like you do, you start off in a career one place, and then you, you, know, you look at another part of it, and you say, well, I could be doing that because that looks easy, or I know how to do that. But if you're not given that opportunity, either you set back on it or you take the risk. And you took the risk. I took the risk, but it was really for other people. I think mm -hmm. success benefits others first. Right. So I wanted to become successful at whatever I do, but I wanted to benefit other people because that's what it's all about. Right. Oh, how wonderful. So. How wonderful. Okay. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have benefited from your knowledge. I do know that over the course of time. Okay. Especially uh, with the books you've written and everything. So let me ask you this. Now, our topic today is overcoming financial obstacles. And we do know that people with disabilities, senior citizens, they have tremendous obstacles to come overcome. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice or some type of assistance that they should be going into a channel that they should be tuning into to plan for their finances or work with what they have? You know what, who I love, I think, first of all, let me just say this. I think everybody needs their own personal board of directors. So all your viewers out here start saying, you know what, I do need an accountant or whether it's accounting aid society. I need them on my personal board of directors. I need this show on my personal board directors. Right. You always give great information, Marcia. So you Thank need you. to be on everybody's personal board directors. You need somebody to talk about your health, somebody to talk about accounting, mm -hmm. an accountant, you know, whether it's a lawyer too, because either you do your estate planning or the state plans before you, one or the other, mm -hmm. but you need your own personal board directors. Everybody does. Then also find out if you're on fixed income, say, you know what? I'm going to track my money for 30 days. Just go back to the old school method. I'm going to write down where it's going this day, the next day, every day, mm -hmm. and then figure out, just like you're your own chief life officer, you need to make layoffs. So everybody needs to make a layoff. Like, am I spending too much money, maybe entertainment? Am I spending too much money giving it to the kids? Mm -hmm. Am I spending too much money, you know, paying high interest rates? So okay. figure it out. Also, it's an organization called Green Path. You should talk to them, too. And they will set up an actual budget for you. Okay. And if you're computer savvy, go on mint.com, M-I-N-T.com. 
So there's different ways that you should set up your own personal budget, different ways you could find money and say, you know what? I didn't know I really had money. How do you find money? Probably by going to your closet, like Marcus, right. probably going <laughs> in your closet. So I try to figure out different ways mm -hmm. to create money in your budget. Mm -hmm. So say, Marsha, say you, you, I know if I go to your home, so you go in your closet, say, you know what? You have money right here in the closet. Oh, yeah. Go take your clothes to a resale shop. Mm -hmm. So a lot of your viewers out here have maybe a couple of closets full of clothes. Take it to a resale shop. Sell mm -hmm. it. Make sure you're doing different things. Don't pay for entertainment. You won't go to the movies. There's wonderful movies out. But I want you to join an organization called AARP. AARP okay. is one of the best organizations ever. All the resources that you need, whether it's budgeting, whether it's retirement planning, whether mm -hmm. it's going back in the workforce, whether it's caregiving, whether it's anything, have AARP on your personal board of directors. But another thing, you could go uh, restaurant.com restaurant is one place. Say you want to go out and eat, AARP, you get a bigger discount. You can buy $50 worth of food for $10. <laughs> oh, so write, tell, your, tell your viewers, they need to write this down. Well, Restaurant.com. Restaurant. Another thing, mm -hmm. go to the movies. AARP has different movie nights. Okay. Absolutely free, all the movies, before it comes out. Or if not, they can go on a website called Groupon.com. And what they do at Groupon.com, they go at, I'm not Groupon.com, uh, GoFobo.com. G-O-F-O-B-O.com. Tell them to go on there. They go to the movies for free. So it's a lot of different things that a lot of people can do for free. And then people love focus groups. You can go on focusgroups.com, Cypher Research in Michigan. There's so many of them. And do you know people will pay you just to come in and test some food? They love seniors. They love people on disability. Oh, yeah. Everybody to come in and say, can you try this? Can you try this food? Can you mm -hmm. try this? They'll pay you 100 to 150 bucks an hour just to come and try different things. Wow. So people want your opinion. Mm -hmm. So people love to get their opinion anyway. Might as well do it. And get paid for it. And get paid okay. for it. <laughs> so there's so many different things. So that's why I want people to do different things to overcome financial obstacles. But at least don't shop on Fifth Avenue. Okay. But have five avenues of income. But you know what? It, it, all the information you just gave in that very quick moment was mm -hmm. so useful that a lot of people say, all this time. I could have did this all this time or why? I didn't know that, you know, because a lot of people who have retired are staying home and just couch potatoing and watching programs or if they just recently retired, they're afraid to spend money because now I'm on mm -hmm. retirement. I don't have a check coming in but once a month, so I can't, you know, go to the movies anymore. Or I can't go out to dinner. And they start cutting things before they really have to or they didn't really, to me, organize it so they could still enjoy some of those same things. And you just gave a list of, of different sites that they can go on and have a yes. good time. That's so right. I, just ask. Yes, right. Right. Just ask. <laughs> that's right. So that's how, that's how we're on just ask. So you got to just ask people. And yeah. and just say, I mean, if you really look at the the underlining, you know, mm -hmm. value of your television show is you don't want people to be poor. You know, poor means pass over opportunity I repeatedly. Want, I want a show of opportunity. Okay. I want you to hold that thought and we'll okay. be right back with some more okay. good information. Mm hmm do anything for kids. Yet one in six children in the U.S. struggle with hunger. Help end childhood hunger near you. Learn how at feedingamerica.org. <laughs> Donating it to Goodwill may be the most incredible of all. Your donations help fund job placement and training for people in your community, which means your stuff can be more powerful than you think. Goodwill. Donate stuff. Create jobs.
And welcome back to the second half of the show. Now, those of you who are just now joining us, we have Arthur Gail Perry Mason, and we're talking about uh, overcoming financial obstacles, which, you know what, she just gave a, a list of websites, so you can turn <laughs> into our, our website, and you'll find those same listings that she gave, because I said, wow, I didn't even know half of that, and uh, hats off to AARP, okay? So one thing about it, ladies and gentlemen, you know, I always say if you have a question for us, 1-800-323-5336. Twitter, hashtag Marsha, all that stuff at the bottom, right, right, right in my lap. You can get all my information. And if you have a question for Gail Perry Mason, please forward us that question and we'll get it over to her. Now, on that note, Gail, I mean, people are very excited to hear news about how to save money. So what are some of the things that we should do in our household to fix our income? Well, number one, we don't want to look at it as, you know, I know we all have fixed income. But then also we can have other avenues of income like we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. So one thing to overcome, because everybody has a financial obstacle. So as I mentioned before, make layoffs. Look at your cable bill. Oh, yeah. As long as you have this channel on, you're straight, right? Mm -hmm. So, okay. <laughs> but look at your cable. Call them up and talk about, you know, can I, how can I lower my bill? All you have to do is just ask. That's true. And the same thing when it comes to, to our electric bill. Mm -hmm. So start calling interest rates on our credit card bills. Oh, yeah. Call and say, can you lower my interest rate? Mm -hmm. All you have to do is ask. So every day, I think everyone should take a mind their own business day. I do it on Mondays. And I take the first hour of the day and I call up and mind my own business. I call my auto insurance and say, can you lower it? Can you bundle it? What can you do? Shop and compare on those days. Okay. If I go grocery shopping, I use a website called Ibotta, I-O-I-B-O-T-T-A dot com. Mm -hmm. Another thing, say a lot of people who are on fixed income, it's like, oh my God, my refrigerator went out. My oven went out. This went out. What am I going to do? I do not have the money. I go on a website called freecycle.org. On your mind, your own business day, sign up for this website. It's called freecycle.org. And then you put out there, I'm looking for a refrigerator. I'm looking for an oven. There's right. no money ever exchanged or else you get kicked out of the community. All right. So I'm in a community where I had someone who had a house fire and didn't have any money, was mm -hmm. on a fixed income. I went and got everything for their household oh. absolutely free. And whether from the dishes to the television to mm -hmm. the couches, name anything. So many things so, can be donated. If people just leave it on their front porch. And okay. then what you do is you recycle it. Mm -hmm. So say you have some extra things, you have extra jewelry, you have extra this, you put on the website, this is what I have. You can come and get it at this time, but no money is okay. ever exchanged. Okay. So take a mind your own business day. That's nice. And fix your mm -hmm. own fixed income mm -hmm. by doing different things and making it available to you, more resources, more opportunities. Okay. Now, what do you suggest about children? Young, young adults these days are kind of like a little frivolous with money. I mean, you oh, know, it's yeah. like, you know, I mean, my, ne my nephew wanted the pizza one day and he wanted it delivered. No problem. When the guy came, it was a small pizza and it was $25. And I said, ah! no. <laughs> and what it was, it was the items that he put on the pizza and the delivery. It was, and, I, and the guy was mad, but I was like, this is a kid. This is an itty bitty pizza, no bigger than this. For $20, mm -hmm. I needed a big pizza for that kid. And my nephew was angry, but I'm like, you get over it. I'll just take you and get one. So young people, when they spend money now, they just spend it. They don't think about tomorrow. Uh, I really want that iPad. Yes. I want that scooter or whatever those <laughs> things are. Yes. You know, is there any suggestions to help parents prepare their children financially? Well, first of all, you said iPad. Anything that starts with I, iPad, iPhone, I, whatever, I don't buy it. Okay. So first of all, that means if it starts with I, that means that's the person who should be buying it. So that's number one. Kids should learn early on. I have a money camp, aged 8 to 18. I teach our youth about in investments, uh, economic empowerment, how to budget, how to save, how to give. Did you say from 8 to 18? 8 to 18. Okay. Because okay. kids start spending our money. We're going to be broke behind all these kids, especially all these kids that want organic stuff, taking long showers, wanting all the best of everything. Oh, yeah. name brand. And that's what they want, name brand. No, 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 no. I just, I think we should not do that. I think we start, we need to start teaching them early on mm -hmm. the value of the dollar, but also teaching the value of themselves and how to make money. Right. Our kids need to learn entrepreneurship mm -hmm. from the start, and that's what they need to learn. So, as I run this camp, I've been doing it for 21 years, and I teach them economic empowerment and how to give. I think you have to give, you have to save, mm -hmm. and you have to spend. Those are things they have to learn. 
and then teach him how to budget. So your nephew, I don't know how old he was when he thirteen. Okay, when he purchased a twenty five dollar pizza, he should have asked the price, how much it's gonna cost. Mm -hmm. And then ask him, so how much money do you have towards this pizza? If they're not making an investment in it, they shouldn't own it. That's right. Yep. So yeah. I think our youth need to learn. So I've been doing that for years. They should learn how to budget. They need to have the app, mint.com. They need to learn credit early. They need their financial report card early. So I think we need to start. And all of our youth need a jar. And a jar means, and put on that jar, life, living in financial freedom every day. They need to learn how to make more deposits than withdrawals every day. Okay. So... If they have change, because you can just put our change together. You could change your way, oh, yeah. change your financial mindset by just saving change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing. So start teaching them early on and not just giving, giving, giving right. and letting them think. I think that today's yeah. parents are so consumed with trying mm -hmm. to say, I want my kids to have more than I had. I want my kids to be, you know, be more exposed. You can have all that, but when the kid has to come to I you agree. for everything that mm -hmm. he or she wants to do, you're not giving them financial structure you're giving them financial power i have three sons okay. so i think i want my i want my kids to be better than me of course but that means i want them to have a better credit score than i do i want them to have more knowledge i want them to have more opportunities so we want our kids to be better than us but that doesn't mean dress better have a nicer car mm -hmm. have a nicer home that means have more opportunities more knowledge more exposure but not you know, the those shoes oh, yeah. that look like Star Trek shoes that cost right. a few hundred bucks that people, you know, do. Right. The, yeah, so yeah, no, yeah, we don't want yeah. that. Yeah, I'm not opposed yeah. to you having it. I'm just, you know, I just want you to think it out. You know, like you can have three pair of shoes with that price compared to that one pair of shoe at this price. No, you could own the company okay. that made that <laughs> shoe take for that back. price. Okay, yeah, right. take, take it to another level. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you could own that company. So you got to start. So my goal is to teach kids how to be owners versus consumers. Okay. And right. that's what I think we need to do. Did you hear that, parents? Okay. Okay. I mean, you know, I'm into that because you know, when I take mm -hmm. my nieces and nephews to the store and they ask me for something, I say, how much is it? And then I say, how much change are you going to get back? If I give you the money, how much change are you supposed to get back? I say, you might not know taxes. I say, but round it off and tell me what you think you're supposed to get back. Then they kind of tell me. Then I take them to the register and I let them make the purchase. Mm -hmm. And they have to be able to talk to the person, the cashier or whatever, mm -hmm. to understand that they're yeah. going to make this, this exchange. Don't just put the money on the counter and hope that that person understands what you're doing. You have to be able to say, I'm interested in buying this item. How much is it, you know, and have the money in your pocket to be able to give it to them and learn that way. That's my thing about young people getting started. Because I see a lot of little kids go in the store and just drop their money in the tray and look at the, the man or the woman like, okay, yeah. you know what to do with the money, don't you? And no, aren't, have aren't them you research honest? It. <laughs> right, right. Have them research what they're going to buy, too. Right. You know, whether it's a video game, can I buy it used? Mm -hmm. How can I get it cheaper? What can I do? So we need to find out different things that or we Or even do. if you can trade the, 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 the game in. An old game in to buy a new game. Right, because Absolutely. what are you doing with the old games? You know, mm -hmm. it's like you always have these old games and you never go back to them. So eventually it's got to be some type of exchange service somewhere that lets you sell and buy. It's just like the comic book store. Oh, absolutely. Sell and buy comic books. Absolutely. Okay, so I think mm -hmm. everything can be, you know, in consignment shops. I love consignment shops. I know. You know so. well, we need to buy appreciating assets. Right. And that's it. Okay. Now, if it's going to depreciate, you know, why buy it? Did you hear what you said? Okay. <laughs> why buy it? Okay, so mm -hmm. on that, we'll be right back. Why buy it? Okay. Marie, you have prediabetes. Prediabetes? I don't have time to eat, write, or exercise. I'm a busy mom. Oh, you're a busy mom. Yeah. This is great news. Busy moms never get prediabetes. Wait, what? Let me just... Yeah, this is all the people at risk for prediabetes, and way over here, busy moms. You think you're probably sober? Yeah. But you're thinking about taking the back roads home just in case. Why would you do that? Probably okay isn't okay. Call a cab, a car, or a friend. Good choice.
And welcome back to the last half of the show. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know about you, but I'm enjoying Gail Perry Mason today <laughs> because one thing about finances, you all have them, including we do too. And you kind of ask yourself every day, where am I going to get some money from? You know how you kind of look in the old purse, pair of pants, in the shoes. <laughs> you don't want to pick that penny up off the ground. Well, you're going to change your whole uh, uh, outlook now about picking up that penny off that ground and looking for that money in those couches and stuff like that. So, <laughs> so I mean, really, you know, people always go, I'm not picking up them pennies. I see people pick up pennies in the next you know the jar All is the full right so you know or if you go to a store and you let them keep your pennies i'm like why'd you do that you know they add up too at the end of the day that store owner has made 10 to 20 dollars off of everybody who did not take those pennies absolutely okay? so absolutely figure it out now mm -hmm. yeah i want to ask you about the book because i know this book here has sold tremendously so which, yes. which edition is this now is this book number Two, that's three. number two. Number that's two. number two. So okay. I co-author with Glenda Bridgeforth, who mm -hmm. I love dearly. Okay. So one of my sisters. So, okay. but yeah, but Girl Make Your Money Grow it was a national bestseller. Oh yes. From Essence Magazine, mm -hmm. it was on Oprah Winfrey Show. It was mm -hmm. Oprah's Debt Diet. So yes, yeah, so it's done very well. Yes. But they can get anybody can get it on Amazon. It has how to make five avenues of income. You know, how to learn about investing, how to learn about savings, different things like that. So that's all in that book. People can just buy it on Amazon. And they can get a cheap deal on that. Okay. So, oh, yeah, they can do that. Did you say but, cheap? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, well, they can get a reasonable deal, but it's a great investment. So, it's you can, men can buy it, everybody can buy it. You can buy, scratch out girl, make man, uh, yeah. make your money grow, do make yeah. your money grow. Okay. So, yeah. But so, you have another one behind this. Yeah, so I have Money Matters for Families, but now I'm working on another one. I'm working on two more now. Okay. I put up my quotes every day, Pearls of Wisdom. So, I'm doing that because there were pearls every day of my life because okay. we, have to overcome obstacles, oh, right. and that's what a pearl has to do. And my other book that I'm working on now, because I'm trying to work on my weight, because I don't know everybody else, I'm working on my weight all the time, but I'm working on, it's called From a Full Figure Woman to a Seven Figure Woman, A Woman's Guide to Shifting Her Assets. The worst thing in the world is to be fat and broke. So, okay. yeah, because you don't want to weigh more than your credit score, you know that. Okay. So that's the one thing. Then you can't buy anything. So <laughs> yeah. So I'm. But did it all comes did down. Did you really say that from <laughs> a full figure woman to the okay? Because the thing is, you. I mean, it comes down to discipline, mm -hmm. and is eating less and spending oh, yeah. less. Oh yeah. So think about it. So it all comes down to discipline. I don't know if you ever been on Weight Watchers or anything. It's like counting the I mean, points. I think and, you feel yeah. good, you know, when you mm -hmm. change at any point, whether it's your hair, you know, your makeup. Change brings your progress. Clothes. It does. It makes you feel change better. Change brings progress. So it's kind of like save your change. Mm -hmm. And just instead of eating out on payday, instead of eating in the car, like don't eat in the car. You eat the wrong things in the car. When oh, you go yeah. and eat on payday, it's like, oh, as soon as I get my check, I'm going to go eat out. We spend more money on that day. Go out the next day. Go in, on the websites, whether it's restaurant.com, whether it's livingsocial.com or anything. And then that way, or become a mystery shopper and go and eat and you, you get paid to eat. Uh, right. You have more, so you have there's more so fun. many different things that you can do. And it's just really changing your mindset. But as soon as you get that check, do not go out and eat. That's uh -huh. what a lot of people do too. Well, it, let me ask you this. Uh, Gail, will you come back and see us again? I sure will. Okay. You don't have, you great. Don't, just ask. Just ask. Just ask. You don't, have to wait, <laughs> you don't have to wait till the book is done. So I want you to come back. I'm okay. sure I'm I'm going to see less than me when I Oh, you look yeah. great. You look I'm great. I'm going to see less than <laughs> me. Okay. Yeah, so. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we had a wonderful time today. I hope you did tune in. And if, like I said, if you have questions for Gail Perry Mason, just drop us a line at justastalkshow.org. Okay. So I'm your host, Marsha Florence with Just As. And what do I always say? If you know someone with a disability or if you just have a general question, don't be afraid to ask. Just ask. I'm your host. Thank you.